here's what I didn't know about the Environmental Working Group's Dirty Dozen list, that it's meaningless. So the USDA has a surveillance, like a biomonitoring program called the PDP, the Pesticide Data Program. Every year they go out into grocery stores, they get like 10,000 samples of foods, take them back to their labs, prepare them as you would at home, and then measure like 300 different pesticides and pesticide metabolites. The Environmental Working Group takes that data and ranks fruits and vegetables based on how many positives there were. How many samples of a food had two or more detections? What was the maximum number of detections on that food? What was the average number of detections on that food? And what was the total pesticide amount on that food? Here's why that's not scientifically credible. It in no way takes account dose or the actual biological effects of that particular pesticide, which would be reflected in the acceptable daily intake level or the chronic reference dose. So there's no context. There are regulations for every pesticide and most pesticides have specific regulations for specific crops. So you're allowed to use this much on strawberries and this different amount on spinach. And each pesticide has its own dose response, meaning it has different levels at which it starts to cause health harm. And they're not all equally harmful at high doses. So you might be allowed to have one parts per million for one pesticide as a residue on uh, something like an apple and one parts per billion for a different pesticide, right? A thousand times lower. Not only that, but those chronic reference doses or acceptable daily intake levels already have a safety factor built in compared to the no observed adverse effect level found in toxicology experiments. So just because a pesticide or pesticide metabolite is detected on a food, that doesn't mean anything unless you also look at how much was on that food and how does that compare to the acceptable daily intake level or the chronic reference dose. If you don't put it in the context of dose, you're basically just reflecting how sensitive the equipment is to, that measured it. Other analyses of the exact same PDP data show that about three quarters of the pesticide detections were more than a million times lower than the no observed adverse effect level. A million times lower. And only 0.4% were above tolerance. Even above tolerance, remember there's a safety factor built in that doesn't mean it's harmful. And remember that all of those acceptable daily intakes and chronic reference doses are based on chronic toxicity, meaning you have to be exposed to that amount every day for weeks to months for it to cause health problems. What are the chances you get that 0.4% of foods every single day for weeks to months? Zero. Plus this is exactly what the PDP is for, finding the violations of the regulations. Those farms and or factories will now get extra inspections. They'll have to change things. When you actually do the math on how many servings of the dirty dozen foods you would have to eat in order for the pesticide residues to be a problem, factoring in dose, and even doing the math for a child who had smaller body, so less of the, the food to cause a problem. It's still like 68 apples, 200 plus servings of strawberries, like 4,000 servings of kale every single day for weeks to months. Just because something that is potentially harmful is found in food, that does not mean that the amount that is present is harmful. And the fact is a huge percentage of our conventionally grown fruits and vegetables have such low detected levels of pesticides that if they wanted to, they could actually qualify as organic. There is no health difference. There is no safety difference between conventional and organic.